below shows a cycle of diameter 40, position 45 degrees to the horizontal center, line of another cycle of diameter 140, plot the locus of point P as the smaller cycle rolls over the circumference of the bigger circle for one complete revolution. So, yeah, so this is the case you're faced with. Um, this is the rolling circle. This is the circle that, that's supposed to roll over this big circle of diameter of 140. We're giving it a question already. I just had to, I just recreated the question. So, and um, this is the small circle of radius uh, of diameter 40. I mean, the radius is um, going to be 20. I have it written there. And um, the one with diameter, the big circle with diameter. Uh, 140 is the directing circle and it is the circle on which this small circle is going to roll for one complete revolution. So let's get at the um, solving or understanding what happens here. If this circle rolls for one complete revolution starting from P, it will roll its entire circumference. But of course, it will stop somewhere around here because this circle is bigger than it. So to calculate the angle subtended by this rolling circle, starting from P, rolling until it gets to the position P again, we would have to use this formula. We know that um, the length of an arc, that means, what I, what I mean by that is this. If I am going to have, let me draw something here. If I'm going to draw a circle here, for instance, okay, this chord and this chord are the radii of this big circle. They substand an arc, which is this one here. This arc is the arc we're looking for. So we know in mathematics that uh, the length of this arc is given as L is equal to theta over 360 times 2 pi r. So that's the formula I have written here right here for this epicycloid l is going to be theta over 360 times 2 pi r 2 pi r being the circumference of the small circle multiplied by uh, of the big circle rather multiplied by the angle subtended by that arc over 360 the angle subtended by a point is 360 so we have going around will be 360 this arc will be just a fraction of this angle all right, so we are going to calculate this angle. That's what we're looking for, so that we can get the length of the arc that this small circle can actually roll upon. So to do that, we know that uh, this formula is true, and we also know that the circumference of the circle, instead of using L, I think I should you see that the circumference of this of the small circle is two pi r. Therefore, the length that will be covered, this L, this L that will be covered by um, that small circle is going to be equal to C, which is now 2 pi R. Have it this way, Let's have it this way, which is now 2 pi R. Okay, L is now 2 pi R, 2 pi R. Notice the small R for the small circle equal to 2 pi R, the big circle times theta over 360 angle subtended by that. If we make theta this, um, the subject of the formula, we're going to have that theta or theta equals to 360 times r times r, small r over big r. That is the big circle. At the end of the day, we'll get 103. So um, I will pick my compass or simply just pick um, a protractor. If you're using a protractor, fine. Measure from this angle. Remember, we already have this angle substanding this uh, small circle, which means that the initial point or the starting point of this is at an angle 45 degrees this way. Um, so we would use our protractor and measure 103 as calculated. Yes, 103 as calculated. 
and draw a straight line to cover this arc over the top. This arc right here. Yeah, this arc, this very arc. So because this um, circle is going to roll over this, we also need to divide the circle into a number of equal parts. I'm going to choose eight. Eight for time's sake. Okay. So to do that, you place a compass in the center of the circle and um, create an arc. All right, I have circular small, so I can actually do this. Create an arc above. Okay. Turn in. It's an arc of radius. This got an arc above. On this other side, the same radius, draw an arc to cut the previous arc right there. So a straight line drawn from this point through the middle will be dividing the circle into uh, equal halves. Okay, to divide into each equal half, we'll have to divide this particular part or divide any of this part up in this part down, the one you choose to. So, all up to, to you. This much radius in position here, the same radius. Put an arc there, the same procedure, draw a straight line through the center to the circumference of the circle. We have divided this into the whole part. I'll do the same on uh, the side, right? Put an arc, same radius on this point. Put an arc, cut the previous one, and draw a straight line through that point of intersection, two arcs, the middle of the line, and extend that line through that center circumference of the line. So what we have done is that we've been able to divide this into eight equal parts. So I will label them and we will start drawing immediately. Okay, um, I have divided my cycle into um, equal parts. What's next is to divide this arc that we um, figure out, this arc right here, into eight equal parts as well. And this very arc here into eight equal parts. And um, notice that I started my initial point at P with zero. If this circle rolls, it's going to roll clockwise this way. It's going to roll clockwise this way, right? So the first point that would land on the arc would be one, followed by two, followed by three, four, five, back to zero. Like that until we get to this end of the uh, arc. So let's um, divide this arc into eight equal parts. Okay. To divide this arc into eight equal parts, um, you could actually use your compass, okay? And um, measure this equal division. Let me choose one from eight to from one to two, okay. I've noticed I've noticed the noticed the length already, so I'm going to take that same equal division and uh, divide this. Create an arc here. The same radius. Create another arc here. I'll continue this progression until I get to eight. All right. So um, because I'm using AutoCAD, I've done that using the division uh, line. So I'm going to go straight to measuring that. So good. I have one point here. Straight to the middle. I have another point here. Um, there's another point here. Good luck. Point here. It's another point here, straight to the middle. It's another point here. And I think there's another one here. Straight back up the middle. So I'm going to remove this excess lines. 
yeah, and I have my lines divided into each equal part. Just like I did with the small circle, these divisions, I'm also going to number them into um, each equal part. But um, um, to avoid numbering and renumbering, I'm going to skip that part, and I'm going to draw a straight line from the center, the center line, so that when I extend these lines to that center line, my division, uh, my centers are going to become from C0, so it's, going to be, it's, it's going to be C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, or C8. I'm going to use that as my numbering instead. So let's do this. So with the big circle as my center, and the, small, the center of the small circle, I'm going to draw an arc that will be this long. And please, let's give some respect to this line because the center line, it would have to take uh, a long dash and a short dash. So to know the extent to which this is going to reach, I'm going to draw an extension of this, extend this to this, extend this line, extend all of these lines, touch the center line. So I'm going to label all of those points now, one to eight. That's what I'm going to be using subsequently. Okay, I have numbered all the points corresponding to the number of divisions, starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to 8. And 8 corresponds to the same 0. That means you're starting from a point P, C0, and landing back to the same point C0. So I'm going to draw uh, the corresponding points for my loci. So I'll draw from 7 and 1, this point. The next is six and two. Don't students always confuse this center line and this line. They are not the same, see? I'm going from six to two, but the center line is starting from the middle and going its own way that way, right? So you can see the difference. There's a little difference that sometimes can be very, very close, but do not confuse these lines. Again, from the center of the big circle, Position five through three and draw a straight line down here. The last line is going to be the line at the top, number four. This is center, the point. We have this line drawn at this point. So now what's next? Um, what's next now is to plot the locus of point P. All right, to plot the locus of point P using the radius of this. The radius that we're given is um, 20, right? So we're going to use that. Starting from the center, the first point is going to be this point, zero. Second point, I'm going to be on C1. My C1 is here. Let's zoom in. C1, I'm going to cut the first point, line one. The radius 20. Okay, a compass. What you do is just permanently set your compass to um, 20 and keep on cutting like that. And now I'm on position two. I'm going to cut line two, not the center line. I'm going to cut line two with the same radius. So I'm going to go 20. C, same radius 20. I'll be here. Make that a little longer so that it should be different from that. Now we're on position three. I'm going to look for line three. Line three passes through uh, five as well. So we have 20 radio cut on this right there. One thing I want to let you know is that position four, since we're using the same radius, it's just going to touch a circle. There's no need to actually draw that with the compass. Center five and line five. This is my line five. I trace this line 5, the same radius, 20, and cut that right there. Long. The next position is position 6. I'm going to trace position 6, and 6 is from here, passing through 2, and touching this with the same radius, 20. Right here. The next position is position seven, center seven, with center seven. 
I'm going to cut line seven. Tracing my line seven, line seven and one are in the same um, loop uh, line. So I'm going to put that right here. So, so I'm going to cut that right here. The last position, which is C naught, is going to be right on top of this uh, position here. So um, with all of those points marked out, I'm going to label them so that we know how to connect the call. That's the last part. So with all the labeling nicely done, what's left for us is to draw the locus of point P through all the points, starting from zero to P1, right here, P2, zoom into P2, see where P is, react right here, P3, it's here, P4, here, P5, here, P6, be here, P7 here, and then we are back at this point. P0. All right, from P0 to P0, we have a curve already. This curve is referred to as epicycloid. So, this is how you draw uh, an epicycloid given a typical Y question such as this. And um, I encourage you to keep watching, to keep practicing, because without practicing, you would lose. All your skills. Draftsmanship actually comes with consistency in practice. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.